Hey everyone, this is Chris with T3 Handicapping here to go over the card for Indiana Grand on Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021. Uh, if you want to follow my picks uh, on a daily basis, you can follow me on Twitter at HandicappingT3, or you can read any of my uh, betting analysis articles on bettingnews.com. So uh, we're going to get started today with a quick evaluation of how things went on Tuesday. Overall, pretty successful day at Indiana Grand um, of the eight thoroughbred races that we had uh there were f six winners that came from the a plus category using the raw scores uh, or the raw grades there was one b uh, horse that won and then there were there was one horse that came from off the board so um that was an off turf event that uh, had had changed pretty dramatically from the original handicapping so um overall things went pretty well i don't have the graphic up here but uh it was a pretty good day in terms of selections uh a lot of favorites a lot of chalk so not a ton of money to be had but um felt pretty good about uh, the way i was seeing the ball uh, one of the things that i am really excited about moving forward here is uh, i've gotten a little frustrated with how many horses are being projected onto that top line um, yes i'm hitting a lot of selections but uh, you know, in many cases, there's four or five horses in the A plus category. And so um, I've kind of developed a new system. It's in beta testing right now. And I'm hoping that by next week at Indiana Grand, uh, I can have that out and fully operational so that we can really cut down and, and make for some lean tickets. So let's take a look uh, at Wednesday's card and see what we have on tap. All right, so we're going to pull up the past performances here. Um, and I did have to go back through and uh, make a number of adjustments here. Um, some tracks that came into the past performance lines that gave my software some issues. Uh, Kentucky Downs is one of them. Some of the horses have run there. Uh, we've got some horses that ran at FanDuel, uh, which used to be uh, Fairmont Park. And so I had to go through and, and make a little correction for that. Um, but I think I've got everything up and running here. Um, this is my second time kind of looking through the card. Uh, and one of the things that I, I've noticed is there's not a lot of separation here uh, using the raw stats. So uh, that's just something to bear in mind. It's going to have to be a day where you're going to have to tread lightly. Uh, the payouts typically at Indiana Grant aren't huge, uh, especially in some of the, the horizontal pools. So just take that with a grain of salt and, and play wisely. So uh, looking at race number one, we're going six furlongs on the dirt. Pace projection of 18. So we're looking at moderate. Uh, moderate pace. A reminder that when you see a header in green, that means that uh, lower is better. Everything else higher is better. Um, so as we're looking at this, my top rated horse is Joy in the Journey, Even Money. I've got an A plus on that horse. Uh, second, I have Cup of Class, who is the second choice. And third, I have Where the Money Went, uh, who is coming in at nine to two, who is Co third choice. So not a lot of creativity here. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I often like to start my day with a single. So uh, if I can, I'll probably just go single joy in the journey, or uh, I might use cup of class to try and create some separation. But more than likely, uh, with this big of a gap with a 102 down to an 88, I'm going to go with the three and move on. I don't think the post position should be anything of concern based on the way the track was playing good early speed. Um, so I think that could be something really effective. Probably going to single the three, even though I think there's some other competitors, I need to create some separation somewhere. Moving on to race number two, we're going six furlongs on the dirt, uh, class level of nine. So this is a pretty good batch. Um, and we've got a 20 pace projector. So we are looking for this race to get a little bit quick. And you can actually see up here, we've got EPs or E's on every single horse in the race, with the exception of WW Candy. And WW Candy is actually going to be uh, one of my top three choices. You can see over here that the letter grades did little to separate uh, our runners in in this spot but i really like um we've got malpies at at eight uh, point eight to one so basically four to five on the morning line um and you can see that overall i mean this five as class is pretty solid uh the next closest would be well you have uh, oil money at five as well and then after that it jumps up a couple of points um i'm sorry game boy benny has also been running at the same level so uh, all three of these horses should be um taking a step away um, but you look i mean oil money has has much better 
um, speed figures there. has a run style that works well, and I know Malpies can be a little bit more versatile. But I think I'm going to end up going uh, much more heavily through the 7 to 2 second choice in oil money. Uh, next, I would have uh, Malpies. Uh, I'm sorry, next I would have Game Boy Benny down on the rail. That does make me a little nervous. I, I don't like uh, the rail very much, especially as things are drying out. And then WW Candy and then Malpies. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, given that Game Boy Benny is 15 to 1, given that Oil Money is 7 to 2, and given that WW Candy is 8 to 1, I think I'm going to go with that single of the three in the first race, and then I'm going to come through those three. Um, if that happens, now I've beaten a heavy favorite in this spot. And I think it's doable. I might be wrong. Um, and certainly I have this horse in with a chance, but I'll take these other three and, and hope for the best and see if I can maybe um, spring some value in leg number two. Coming into uh, leg number three, once again, we've got a race that has a lot of A pluses on it. Uh, and this is part of where my new uh, grading scale that I'm working on will hopefully create a little bit more separation to make it clear as to which horses I prefer. In this uh, situation right now, my preference is on the number four sniper kitten at two to one. So I'm in on another favorite. Now this is a eight and a half furlong on the turf. Uh, we've been off the turf the last couple of days and, and perhaps we'll be off the turf again on Wednesday. I think it's supposed to be drying out a little bit in Indiana, uh, but at the same time, they may be looking to preserve the turf course. So that's one of those things you just have to play by ear. As I mentioned several times, especially yesterday, um, if the race gets taken off the turf, it's going to have a significant impact on a number of these factors. First of all, uh, turf will be switched to dirt in the surface, uh, and then that will recalibrate everything. Records will be recalibrated, speed figures, class, um, all of that will switch to calibrate for uh, dirt form. So this is where we stand right now, but this is subject to change dramatically in the time between now and, and when the horses actually exit the gate. If we do stay on turf, I'm going to be heavily through Sniper Kitten at 2-1. to one. If not for Sniper Kitten, I will probably go here with Quality Step at 3 to 1. Again, we're looking at very uh, low priced horses that aren't all that interesting. Uh, you can see then that you have Jolting Joe and Market Off, um, both listed as 97s and A pluses. I would definitely be inclined to keep Jolting Joe uh, because of the 5 to 1 morning line. I would be less inclined to keep market off because of the seven to two morning line. So um, this is the third race. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've got some separation in the second leg. Uh, I'm very skinny in the first leg, so I might be able to include all four of my top selections there if I'm playing a pick three or maybe even into a pick four. Uh, ending that early pick four will be race number four. And as I look here, I've got three A-plus horses with a score of 90. I have just a simple girl. With a score of 103, I have Tappan into Summer. And with a 96, I have Royals Girl. All three rate out to be A pluses. The five is my top selection in Tappan into Summer. Surprise, surprise, that's the favorite. Um, so we're starting to see that uh, become pretty common here. Uh, but you're also seeing that this class level is really low. I mean, a 10 is not something we see a lot of at Indiana Grand. So typically, I, I like to look for favorites in lower cla in uh, class races with lower numbers, meaning that they're actually a higher class race. Um, I like to see that because generally speaking, those horses have established form and are more likely to run to that form. What I really like about tapping into summer is it does have some tactical speed in a race that right now looks like it's just going to be blistering up on the front end uh, with a 21 pace. Of the early speeds, I definitely think Royals Girl is going to be maybe one of the fastest, although um, I've got some other horses that I think could also be there as well. I mean, tapping into summer, frankly, could be the leader. So Royals Girl is my favorite of speed, and then after that I'd probably be looking to um, some closers, but 
I think for now I'm, I'm feeling comfortable uh, just going, I'll probably actually just go straight with happen into summer. Keep it, keep it really light. Uh, that's just, I think a $6 ticket. If I go single and then I go three deep and then I think I had, I think I wanted to try and use four and then just come single to the five in this race, um, get out of there with six bucks. And even if it doesn't pay much, I'll make my money back on that. All right, moving in here now to race number five. We're going five and a half furlongs on the dirt. This is a two-year-old race. Um, you can see there's some gaps in the coverage. Uh, I've got three A-plus horses. Uh, 104 is Copper Harbor, who's an early speed type. I've got a 97 score on me and Chili, who is going to come from mid-pack. And then I've got an A-plus on Express Mail at 20 to 1. This is an early speed type. I'm really interested here in just going with the 2A. Um, and this is a situation where when I like two horses the way I like these two, I'm inclined to maybe play this race more vertically than I would otherwise. Uh, normally, I'm, I'm not somebody who plays a lot of verticals. I, I tend to stay away from um, trifectas, or at least have in the last several months. I tend to be very horizontally based, doubles, pick threes, etc. Um, but in this case, I really like it. an 8-1 to one shot. And I like somebody who's 20 to 1 on the morning line. So with those prices, um, I think even uh, keying them with some of these others. I mean, I would definitely want me and Chili in. Uh, but even so, I mean, if I take, um, you know, keying the 2 and the 8 with, let's just even say like the 5 and the 9, uh, who's another big price as an A-horse, um, so maybe uh, in this case, what I end up doing is I actually just end up going um, sort of the reverse. I like the two. I like the eight. I like the nine. Um, but I also like this five horse who's favored. Uh, maybe I'll just do a trifecta key box and I'll just key the favorite in here, knowing that I'm going to get plenty of value, plenty of juice. If I get this horse now, eight to one is actually second choice on the morning line. It's a little bloated because of the eight to five. Uh, the four to five price here, the, yeah, the four to five price here on this horse. I'm sorry, this is two to five actually. So uh, really heavily favored. Uh, I, I don't really see it. So um, interesting race and, and one I'll be watching and, and probably playing, looking to beat uh, me and Chili. I mean, if you really want to blow the tote board up, just go with a two, eight, nine try box, put your $3 in and see if you can walk out with stacks of cash. Um, we come into race number six. Uh, again, this is where, as you're looking at this sequence, you know, red flags have to start going off, right? The, the early sequence actually doesn't have uh, any two-year-old races, but now we're going to get hit with them in our later wagers, our late pick fives, um, our straight fire sixes, the late pick four. You're going to actually have multiple um, two-year-old races in them. So, if you're somebody who does well with two-year-old races, that's probably really exciting. Uh, for me, the way that my data plays out, it's just not something I'm going to play a lot of. So uh, here you can see the letter grades I've got um, in this race. Uh, again, two fabulous Philly comes out to an A-plus with a 92. I have a 99 A-plus. I need a girl like you. And then I've got a 114 on Royal Country. And if we stay on turf uh, for this event, that's going to be where my money goes, the two to one favorite. Again, if it gets flipped, um, we would then have to move it over um, and uh, we would have to uh, recalibrate for dirt. One horse that I'm really interested in, if you watch my videos on a daily basis, I've mentioned this horse before, but Sipsy Rose Lee uh, was a horse that I loved at 30 to 1. Uh, the last time it was entered, it scratched out, and I'm still not 100% sure. I haven't had a chance to go back and look at why that was. Um, assuming it wasn't a vet scratch, I like the horse here. Um, if it was a vet scratch, then I'm a little more hesitant. Um, perhaps then at that point, we're looking at some um, potential issues. But if we're not, if it was a trainer scratch, then perhaps this one is ready to run a big race. Um, but I do think, especially with uh, right now, what's a low pace projection, but we also don't have anybody that's really run before. I feel like the number 10 is the horse to beat. 
coming into race number seven, there are nine thoroughbred events uh, on today's card. Um, as we go through here and look, I've got uh, not a lot of uh, letter grades here. The only A plus I have is on uh, prime and proper, a morning line two to one. Uh, there we go, falling on a favorite again. Um, but overall, I think this horse does look like the one to beat. The 90, uh, pretty well towers, but I definitely like Too Lucky here as well. And at 12 to 1, it's worth the inclusion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this one in as well. Um, I'm just looking here. I don't think, I mean, the one is not coming from a great spot and is a P type in a race that's going to favor speed and right now has a lot of unconfirmed speed. I mean, we don't really know who's going to go and who's not. Um, so I would probably have gone skinny in this leg. I don't know uh, where I go from there, though. I don't know how to, when I don't like the plays before it, I don't know how to make this two into something that I really love over here. Um, unless maybe I just fade February sun and I just take two into um, a couple horses in this next race and see if I can get a price there. Um, so I, I'm in on the two in this spot. I don't really need a, a lot of others. I might take a flyer on the eight as long as it stays around 12 to one. Moving on to race number eight. Um, this is seven and a half on the turf. So I'm going to kind of blitz through this one quickly simply because uh, if they do decide to protect the turf, all of this uh, is going to be for nothing. So uh, we'll take a look at who I have as the top turf horses, knowing that if it goes to dirt, everything will be rearranged. So uh, I've got 96A plus on the two freer. I have a 97A plus on the number nine American diamond and a 90 a plus on February sun. February sun is the favorite with a late closing kick. Uh, that does not work in Indiana grand, um, on the turf it's doable. Uh, but even is not as good as the P type say that, uh, American diamond is. So I'm going to take a stand here and say that February sun does not run. Uh, up to par. And so I'm going to go with the uh, number two Freer at 10 to 1, and I'll go with American Diamond at 9 to 2, try and get a price there by beating. So by doing that, then I think I can play a double here, 2 into 9 and 2. Now, if uh, February Sun ends up scratching because they come off the turf, that's going to throw everything for a loop. But uh, that's kind of my initial plan. I like to go into my days with sort of a, like game plan. Here's what I'm going to do, you know, like any any coach would. Um, here's what the plan is. And then when you get into the first race, uh, when you hit the first drive, when you're five minutes into the game and there's a sudden change moment, um, you might have to pivot and go in a different direction. But at least if you know what the plan was originally, you know where you can kind of shift around. So um, moving to race number nine here, it's the final race uh, on the card, at least the thoroughbred portion of the card. Uh, we've got two-year-olds once again. So uh, this is what makes for me the late pick four and pick five uh, basically unplayable um, is just there's two there's you know I think the the late uh, the straight fire six has three two-year-old races that's just too much for me um, and I'm not I'm not particularly proficient at those so uh, I will I will probably be watching a lot of Indiana Grand tomorrow I may not be playing a ton of Indiana Grand tomorrow uh, so here as we're looking, I've got a 101 A plus on Justice the Beast. I've got a 103 A plus on Faithful Notion. Those two are very closely bunched. I'm definitely going to use them in such a manner. Um, here I've got a 90 and a 92, both A pluses on Big Hat No Cows and Traveling Justice. Um, I will. I would probably have used those as well. Like I said, I'm not sure I can even string together a pick three into these. So. What I do like about this race more than some of the earlier ones is I do feel like of the two-year-old races, this one has, you know, those two races both had like four horses that had unknowns. Um, this one is is a little bit lighter with three, um, but it does feel like I have a little bit better picture of it. Um, I don't like the faithful notion as a come from behind type. I think that might lead me to really land on justice. The beast, I might think about doing something similar, um, to what we did in the first leg. And instead of singling out the first leg, I might just replay my double and instead single into the final leg. Say if the three wins, you know, I cash another ticket. If the three doesn't, I'm, pro I'm out, you know, 
probably two dollars if I play it for a buck even. So um, I think that's probably the way you've got to go. Um, otherwise, I think at least based on my data, it's just kind of guessing. Now, again, if you're really good at two-year-old races, um, then maybe this is your bread and butter and, and you feel like you can clean up tomorrow. Uh, you'll probably be taking my money, frankly. So uh, with that being said, uh, you will be able to get the updated grades as well as the T3 boards on my Twitter at Handicapping T3. If you're interested in getting the Indiana Grand Worksheets or having me create custom worksheets for you, uh, please reach out via email, t3handicapping at gmail.com, uh, and I'd be happy to share with you um, pricing structure for those and make sure that I can get them to you in a timely fashion. Good luck in all of your plays at Indiana Grand tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this video.